I was at the time and still like in awe of that level of grace, just on a human level to offer that to somebody considering what she has gone through and, and spent her life doing. Hey everyone, I'm Anna Rumor with Pop Culture, and today I have with me Jake Glacey and Leo Tipton to talk all about Peacock's new series, A Friend of the Family. Welcome, thank you for being here. Now, having the real Jan working on this series, what kind of insight did she offer each of you on your performances as Brother B and as Gail? Jake, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, you know, I, I don't think I would have wanted to be a part of this if Jan and Marianne weren't involved because the story is is their story and is so sensitive and and difficult and needs to be handled in a certain way. And, um, you know, Jan left me a note uh, on our first day of filming where she talked about Bee's warmth and uh, charisma and generosity, and he could cry at the drop of a hat. And, and that that uh, ability to make you feel so special and sort of seen was his superpower. Um, and And then the second half of the letter was saying, like, go for it. You know, like mm -hmm. I, she was saying, I'm in a healthy place and you don't have to be worried about, you know, doing your absolute best to create this horrific thing. Mm -hmm. And then also being concerned about the effect it's having on me. And she mm -hmm. was like, I will take care of me and you can take care of, of your job here. And that, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I was at the time and still like in awe of that level of grace just on a human level to offer that to somebody considering what she has gone through and, and spent her life doing. Um, and on a more technical scale, they were a wonderful resource for the writers and for the specificity the kind of like tactile, like textural elements of how to build this world. Mm. Um, you know, they just, it seems obvious, but like could not have done this without them. Yeah, absolutely. And what about you, Leo? Um, I fully agree. I did not have as much, um, pre one-on-one -on -one time with Jan when we kind of got into it mm -hmm. and as it went along, um, and especially after, um, finally getting to kind of connect about Gail, which I kept a distance away from, um, because I felt like I had to build a bit of Gail in my own head. Mm -hmm. um, but the support, I agree with with Jake, is this content. It's amazing to be able to have the support of the victim and use it as a platform to um, bring them out of that and empower. Mm -hmm. You have to do that with the person, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you both worked very closely together on this very uh, turbulent and, and uncomfortable to watch relationship. How was your interactions together? What kind of conversations were you both having? Well, I mean, th there's a, like, to me, B is like an ever changing, ever evolving entity within this, like his mm -hmm. own wants and needs and and rationale and reality shift with his moods and wants and needs you know it's like it, it, it's very difficult to pin him down um emotionally or sort of strategically if that makes any sense mm -hmm. and so i don't know that i mean please correct me obviously if i'm wrong Leo. I, I like i don't feel like leo and i had as many like planned out sort of, I see this and you see that and we'll do this, mm -hmm. but that the tension within that relationship is that uh, it started from a place of, of grooming really. Mm -hmm. And that there is so much unknown and unspoken between them and a real Canyon between their statuses in this relationship. Mm -hmm that um, that the creating that within a scene is, is actually better done just doing the scene together mm. than sort of talking it through. Um, because what's not said between them is uh, a lot. And mm. separately that like, 
this is separate from the creation of it, but like uh, Leo's performance is heartbreaking and incredible mm-hmm. and, and, and like, it, yeah, just remarkable, <laughs> you know, like yeah. to work with and then also to see it and go like, I probably can't swear on this, but to be like, that's so good, <laughs> you know, yeah. right. Uh, right. Is, is awesome. Well, thank you so much. Both of you were amazing. I, I, the entire series was just wonderful. I really appreciate both of your times. Hey, everyone. I'm Anna Rumor with Pop Culture. And today I have with me McKenna Grace to talk all about Peacock's new series, A Friend of the Family. Welcome. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for talking with me today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course. Well, going into playing Jan, tell me a little bit about how it was working with the real Jan. What kind of insight was she able to give you into your performance? What kind of conversations did you have? It was entirely uh, important to me. It was so important. It was one of the, uh, it was the first question I had was like, how involved is Jan and all of this? Are her and her family okay with this show? And it was so important to me to have a connection, to be able to talk to Jan and, and, Fortunately, she was so open uh, with me and so honest, and that meant the world to be able to message her, call her, and ask her questions and have her guidance, because I really wanted to make sure that I was doing her right. Yeah, absolutely. Did she kind of give you any insight into how she was as a child or her family, or did she say, you know, make your make your own performance, do your own thing? No, she totally gave all of us the go ahead to, to give a performance and to play mm-hmm. because yes, these are, it, this is her story. This is her life. These are her people, but it's also us playing characters, the character versions of that mm-hmm. in scripted format. And it, of course it's going to be a little bit different and we're going to run with some things as actors. And she gave all of us so much freedom, which was so freeing and and kind of her to do. But also I just, I really asked, I I wanted to know, I wanted to know, I would read, uh, I read her old diary entries and I read uh, all of the letters between her and B and I would read and I would talk to her and ask her all sorts of questions because I really wanted to make sure that I knew everything that I could. Yeah, absolutely. And that's such an intense kind of situation and correspondence to dive into. How was it for you as an actor to to put yourself in the place of Jan going through such a, a difficult and horrifying time? It's frightening. It's, it's, Mm -hmm. it's frightening. And, and I just sit and I really do my best to try and put myself in what she was thinking. And there's always so much of a conversation to be had with, uh, with the other actors in the scene and with the director before every single scene, because there is so much happening in her life. And it is such a complicated relationship that she has with B, not only just with B, but with her family Mm -hmm. after everything that has happened and and everything in her life is just so complex. So there's so much to figure out before every scene and during every scene. So Mm -hmm. it was a lot, but it was such an amazing process to be a part of. Absolutely. And, And how much did you work with Hendrix to kind of keep things continuous? Did you do that at all? Or, or was it just separately performing your versions of Jan? Um, I did. I, I spent uh, the first two, three weeks that I was in Atlanta with her uh, mm-hmm. hanging out and I'd take her out for boba and Aww. I would like, uh, she would come over and I'd, I'd watch her if her mom was out or gizmo. No, sorry. My dog's barking. <laughs> but, um, we would, we would hang out and she loved gizmo, but uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I would try to pick up on little things, whether it was the way that she smiled or, and uh, the things that she would do and, she would always pray in a specific way in the show. So I would have to mimic that, but it was also figuring out what Jan did in real life and, and, and uh, doing that, but also trying to make sure that we're doing it the same way. It was, it was a fun uh, thing to figure out. Yeah. Complicated, but uh, you did such a wonderful job. Your performance in the show is, is really great. So I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. No, thank you so much. It was awesome talking with you. Hey everyone, I'm Anna Rumor with Pop Culture, and today I have with me Nick and Tosca and Jan Broberg to talk all about Peacock's new series, A Friend of the Family. Welcome, thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs> well, Jan, you have told your story in kind of more of a documentary style before. How does it compare to telling your story in this scripted drama through actors? A scripted drama in nine parts with fantastic actors, an amazing production team, amazing writers is so 
I am so full of gratitude because I mm-hmm. feel like it's telling the full story in the mm-hmm. way that I would have wanted it to come across so that people can relate to it because this kind of abuse, even though my story is a little crazy, it's real people, real families, and the abuser or the predator or the groomer is either in the family or close to the family and you just don't see it. So I wanted mm-hmm. to expose this kind of psychology, this kind of you know, manipulation. And I think the series does that. I'm so happy about it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I've screened the series. It's wonderful. And, and Nick, I'm curious what kind of brought you together with Jan in the first place and what it was like putting this together and having her work so closely with you. Well, I was drawn to the story after seeing the documentary, but really after reading the Broberg's book and hearing it through their or through their their own voice. Um, their story is so terrifying and so so maddening and haunting. But the more you think about it and the more you dig into it, the more human and relatable it is because we all have these, you know, chinks in our armor. We all have uh, the vulnerabilities that can be used against us by someone we love and trust. So once I kind of got that, bug that you get as a writer where it's like this story won't leave me alone and it gives me chills um, and and there's more to understand about it. We reached out to Jan because that was the essential thing. I mean, if we if we weren't going to partner with Jan and her family, like we weren't going to do this. So we reached out and then we spent, I mean, really the next three years working on it since since then. Um, But we, we talked for a long time. And Jan and her family were so generous with their time and their story and their history and gave us so much that we could not have told the story without. Yeah, absolutely. And and Jan, I am curious how much you worked with the actors when it came to their performances, because it must be kind of odd finding people to play you, play your family in this way. You know, the casting did such a a magnificent job. So I give credit first and foremost to to those behind the scenes that made the right choices. Because Mm -hmm. for me, I I was able to write some letters to them, like before they came to set, Mm -hmm. I was in Atlanta, and we were, you know, meeting with various departments, art department and costume design and doing a lot of that, you know, detail work to make it the story really livable, really rich, really right in that time period. And I just had that feeling like if I could just write them a letter to let them know, to give them the license to bring their A game as they're all magnificent actors. I I wanted them to feel free to do that. And then I just gave a few little, here's some little things to know about my dad, about my mom, about me, mm-hmm. about Birchtold, you know, that make them full human beings that I think that was my way. And then they would, they would text me and we would have FaceTimes and we would just talk about little things, everything. Colin wanted to know what he'd be playing on the piano if it were my Mm. dad. My dad would wake us up to playing the piano on some, you know, Sousa March and then we'd get up and go to school. And Mm. so it was really nice because Anna and I had some of those exchanges and and she wanted to meet my mom and we we Mm. were able to FaceTime. It was just, they were as lovely as they could be. And I was able to, to share what I could, but they brought so much richness, richness to every single character that I was 100% happy. McKenna Grace and Hendrix Yancey, emotional intelligence out the wazoo. I mm. love those two girls. On set, Absolutely. too, they would, the cast would bring these things that Jan had told them in their conversations. And in little moments, you know, Colin or any of them would say, like, oh, what if I said this here? What if I just threw out this little phrase? Like, Bob would say this or, you know. And and so that I think was really um, really enriched the the production and the storytelling. Absolutely, and it, it definitely shows in the uh, in the show. I can't wait for everyone to see it, and I appreciate both of your time. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm.